Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Florante Cruz of the UPLB Museum of Natural History, and I am your webinar host. And thank you for your continuing support and engagement with the Museum's Biodiversity Seminar Series. Our webinar today is a special event since it will be also a technical presentation by our speaker, Professor Philip A. Alviola, uh, and it serves as part of his uh, PhD degree requirements. This is being done in collaboration with the Department of Forest Biological Sciences, College of Forestry and Natural Resources with the guidance of the UPLB Graduate School. Professor Alviola is an Associate Professor 7 at the Animal Biology Division, Institute of Biological Sciences, and currently working on his PhD, Forest Biological uh, Sciences degree uh, at the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. His scope of research undertakings include bat ecology and virology, mammalian taxonomy and systematics. And he has co-authored and authored uh, 43 scientific papers published in international and peer reviewed journals, including bioscience, conservation biology, emerging infections, diseases, and other uh, high impact journals. He is also a research associate and visiting scientist of the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago, USA and a curator for mammals and other wildlife at the UPLB Museum of Natural History. For his significant research outputs, he was awarded by the DOST National Academy of Science and Technology, the Outstanding Young Scientist of the Philippines Award for Wild Bi Wildlife Biology in 2017. And the next year, he was selected by the Asian Scientist to be part of the top 100 Asian scientists, a crop of 100 prize-winning Asian researchers, academicians, innovators, and business leaders from across the Asia-Pacific region. Friends, let us all welcome Professor Philip Alviola. Sir? Maraming salamat po. Uh, Mag-share screen na ako. Uh, maraming salamat po, uh, Sir Florante, for the introduction. And I would especially like to thank uh, my, my guidance committee uh, members for, for taking the time to, for, this, uh, for my graded seminar. So the title of my dissertation, overall title of my dissertation is on the ecology of bats, order Chiroptera, uh, in the karst forest landscape in Polillo Islands, Philippines. So for this second graded seminar, I will be presenting the two chapters of my, my dissertation. Okay. I am, uh, I'm a PhDR, PhD by research candidate at the Forest Biological Sciences uh, program. Okay. Uh, so, uh, before I go to the, the first chapter, so let me just present you uh, my approved dissertation chapter. So there are about, uh, there are five of them. <clears throat> uh, the first is the, you know, the cave dwelling bat assemblage of Polillo Island, Philippines. Uh, second is the sampling adequacy and seasonal variation in bat diversity and abundance in Puting Batok Cave and Karst Complex, Polillo Island, Philippines. So this will, these two will be uh, what I will be presenting today. Uh, the third chapter is on the echolocation pulse of insectivorous bats in a karst forest, also on Polillo Island. Uh, I will be presenting this, uh, uh, the third chapter uh, next week, uh, June 1. So, and the fourth is on the diet and foraging ecology of insectivorous bats in karst forest of Polillo Island. And the last chapter uh, is entitled uh, Emergence Patterns of Cave Dwelling Bats in Pating Batok Cave and Karst Complex. Okay, so for the first chapter, uh, I have four objectives. So the first one is to assess the bat species composition and population size in 22 caves that we surveyed in Polillo Island. Uh, the second is uh, we'll determine the relationship between species richness and bat population with measures of cave characteristics. Uh, the third is uh, I will document the information on Bat reproductive status. So this includes the sex ratio, uh, age class, uh, uh, pregnancies, and uh, so other reproductive condition parameters. And the fourth one is I will also um, going to be uh, documenting the information on physical disturbances in in caves that we surveyed. Right. Uh, so Polillo Island. So just a backgrounder on, on the island. So it's about 761 square kilometers. It's the 19th largest island in the country. Uh, as you can see here, it's found on the eastern side of Luzon Island. So it's around, uh, around well, 40 kilometers from the town of Real Quezon. Uh, it falls 
under climate type two. So this means that it's uh, uh, no pronounced wet season. So essentially, it's uh, it's raining all throughout uh, all throughout the year, but in different magnitudes. So the the, the really pronounced wet season is between November and April. Uh, with December having the maximum uh, amount of rainfall with 600 millimeters, and May, well, you have less than 150 millimeters. Uh, the entire island is um, has less than 20% forest cover. Most of it are planted with um, coconut groves, coconut uh, plantations. Uh, there's some residual forest, um, open open areas, and um, Parang, parang, elevate, uh, parang vegetation. And the main produce of the island is uh, copra. Hence, uh, you have this extensive uh, networks of coconut plantations all across the island. And uh, there's what's also um, very apparent about Pulu Island is that there's extensive karst formation along the eastern seaboard. So geologic studies have, have, have indicated that much of the western portion of the Polilo Island is volcanic in nature, whereas very contrasting with uh, the, the eastern half of the island where it's, it's dominated by limestone formations. Okay. Okay. Oops. Oh, Ayo. Okay. Ayo, yeah. Oh, there you go. Sorry. All right. Uh, for the survey methods, uh, we did a survey back in 2009, uh, so about 12 years ago. So we visited the island uh, between May to June for a total of about 15 or 16 days. Uh, so we captured um, uh, we captured bats on these 20, we tried to capture bats on these 22 caves using mist nets set at cave entrance. But most of the time uh, we, we went inside uh, the cave for the entire length of the cave and captured bats there. So we can, uh, what we call this, this technique is the Sagala method, where we, uh, two persons will carry the mist net, and then they will um, try to, to walk the entire distance of the cave and then uh, capture bats uh, as we move along. And we've also done measurements and descriptions of cave attributes. So these include uh, your cave length. So we measured it from, from the entrance to, to, to another entrance or the, the if there's a second entrance, or up to where uh, people can uh, can uh, can pass or enter, um, we've also measured the, the entrance size as well. And then, of course, we uh, also acquired uh, readings for temperature and relative humidity. Okay. And another part is uh, we also documented humans disturbance types present. So, as you can see here in the in the picture. Uh, one of the most prevalent uh, cave views actually across the country is um, um, pressure hunting, you know, uh, brought about by uh, during the war when the Japanese left. And uh, urban legends would suggest that they left so many treasures in these uh, caves. <clears throat> and <clears throat> uh, we also acquired reproductive data. So we assess uh, all the, the bass that we captured and we assess their reproductive condition. Uh, well, for male or female, um, if they're pregnant, are they lactating or they're carrying um, <clears throat> young or unweaned juveniles? Yeah. So these are the, the caves that we surveyed. Uh, as, mis, as I mentioned before, uh, we have surveyed uh, 22 caves and all were concentrated along the Eastern seaboard. So from the North in Karalagan, we surveyed about 13 caves. And then in Barangay Aluyon, about four caves. And then at the Poblacion, uh, at the center. So we surveyed their two caves. And then for Kabugao, uh, one cave. And then down south at Barangay Kaniwan, uh, two caves. So for a total of 22 caves, all in all. So for the results, so we captured a total uh, from the 22 caves that we surveyed. We, 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 ca we captured a total of 16 bat species. and this 16 bat species now represents 73% of the total bats known for Polilio Island. And uh, during that time, and even now, uh, six of those species are new records for the island. So these are the species that we captured. So we have Megaderma, Spasma for health, uh, representing Megadermatidae, 
Ambulinura electo for Ambulinuridae. So, and then we captured three species of fruit bats. Uh, so these species of fruit bats, Aeonicteris and Rosettus, are almost cave, uh, obligate cave dweller. Uh, we also captured three species of Rhinolophidae or your, your horseshoe bats. And then we also captured an astounding diversity of leaf nose bats or your Psideridae. And then uh, three species of Vespertilionids. <clears throat> All right, so for cave and bat distribution, so uh, the, the graphs show uh, the frequency of caves according to the number of species for, for your left graph. And then for the most encountered bat species in terms of uh, recorded caves for, for, the, for the right graph. So as you can see here in the, in the left graph, so most of the caves, uh, about 77% sur survey, 77% uh, harbored only one to three bat species, <clears throat> so around 17 caves. And then only four species, only four caves had uh, more than four species of, of bats. And these four species of, uh, these four caves that have more than four species of, of, of bats are your putting bato, three, four, uh, about four species, putting bato five with five species, bulalon, uh, which is in poblacion, about seven species, and Mopanghe, it's just about nine species. And majority of the, the bat species uh, that we've captured, uh, 13 out of 16 or 81%, were restricted to only one to three caves. So, so what you can see here is that most of the caves we surveyed had very, very few, few numbers of species. <clears throat> so what about bat diversity and cave attributes? So I mentioned before that uh, we try to determine if there's any relationship that exists between uh, species diversity or species richness with various cave attributes. So for cave length uh, and entrance size. So for cave length, there's uh, both measures, both cave attributes had significant, significant positive correlation with species richness. So for, for cave length, uh, the, the R square value is uh, relatively high, um, uh, 0. 0.646. And then for entrance size, uh, <clears throat> very close with 0.514. So it, it really does make sense that, you know, um, as you have lo longer caves, as you have caves with large entrances, it, it does really make sense that you would expectedly, or at least um, you would expect that uh, there would be high number of, of bat species, uh, essentially with the combination of large entrance sizes and spacious area. So we, we, it's assumed that uh, longer caves would have uh, larger areas. Well, this would uh, uh, may facilitate colonization from various bat families. So you have your fruit bats, uh, you have your, your insect eating bats, and the, the large area can also accommodate large roosting numbers, as we have seen uh, in, in, in the caves here in Polilio. Uh, what about bat diversity and microclimate uh, in the form of temperature and uh, relative humidity? So they, they present two contrasting uh, patterns. Uh, both are significant. So for temperature, it's uh, the converse. So what's happened is that there's a significant negative correlation between species richness and temperature, which means that uh, those with, with uh, caves with relatively higher temperature would tend to have uh, lower uh, bat species richness. So the opposite is, is obs was observed for, for relative humidity, where uh, higher bat species richness were found in case with you know, uh, high moisture content or relatively high relative humidity inside case. So essentially what's, what's, what uh, can be said about this is that you know, the combined regime of uh, relatively low temperature uh, low temperature in cave, and of course you have relatively high humidity, uh, can be an, an important factor, uh, especially this very, very apparent in tropical environments where outside temperatures would, uh, which definitely would have a uh, very, very di big difference compared to, to the cave interior. So with this combination of low temperature and high relative humidity, this can facilitate water loss mitigation in bats. It's very, very critical. Uh, for 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 bats, especially in the in the tropics, to 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 uh, to maintain this or to 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 avoid uh, substantial water loss. So 
especially during warm temperatures uh, like in summer months. So what we are seeing is that um, in terms of preference in, in, uh, in cave roost, uh, so our data with my data would suggest that uh, these bats would prefer caves with relatively low temperature and high humidity for to mitigate water loss. So uh, it's now on bat reproductive conditions. So I've mentioned before that I've We've taken several information on reproductive condition of the bats that we've captured. So this table presents the, the sex ratio and age class distribution of the 16 bat species that we've captured. So as you can see here, um, more females were captured compared to, to males, 408 uh, versus 174. <clears throat> we have to take note that this field work, the, the, this field work was conducted uh, during the, the the summer months, you know, the, the uh, between May and June, so that appeared where it's the the lowest in terms of rainfall. Uh, and uh, as you can see, uh, in terms of the sex ratio, at least ten species had female skewed ratio. So the mean ratio was two point nine seven is to one. So this means that uh, there's almost a three females for one male uh, in terms of our captures. For the, for the age class distribution, 84% um, captured were adult bats, but uh, what you have to look here is the, 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 the numbers for subadults, uh, those subadults that are already capable of flight, as you compare it with non-flying juvenile, those that are, are, are connected or, or still attached to their, to their uh, mothers. So there are more unweaned non-flying bats, non-flying juveniles, than weaned uh, subadults, so 62 for non-flying juvenile, 33 for subadult, and uh, although not shown here, is that uh, at least more, uh, more than 60 percent of the, the females that we've captured were either pregnant or lactating. So, what are the factors that that influence uh, the bias ratio? You know, definitely skewed to to the females. So, uh, several. I propose here several uh, explanations. So one explanation would be uh, male and subadult dispersal. Uh, there's the dispersal of male and subadult during the breeding season. Um, so this has been documented in several parts of, of the world, um, some in, in, in across more temperate parts of, uh, of, uh, of Asia. Uh, and then there's also this uh, seasonality of occupancy by females. So this is, has also has been documented in, 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 so, in, in caves in several parts of the world. So what's, what's happening is that um, during breeding season, particularly let's say uh, in Africa or in, in, or in, in you know, the Americas or Europe. So during the breeding season, so the bats in caves, so they, they segregate. So the males segregate and the subadult segregate. So they fly in search of other other caves, and then what happens is that sometimes the females would would remain, or sometimes the females would uh, disperse, or well, the females would remain, and then they then uh, um, they will nurse for for then they will undergo pregnancy, and then uh, nurse their their, their young. Uh, on the other hand, sexual segregation has not been documented in the tropics, particularly in Southeast Asia. So. Uh, Although I will uh, I will show you later on uh, on the, the second chapter uh, evidences that uh, can uh, <clears throat> pointing to sexual segregation uh, here in the uh, in the Philippines in at least in Polillo. So this the data that is presented here uh, very low number of males uh, high percentage of pregnant and lactating bats. So this is a strong and in, uh, indication of a an ensuing uh, breeding season. So there's uh, some of the semblance of um, dispersal by male and adult uh, subadults. And with the, the high number of pregnant and lactating bats, so this also points to a maternity roost formation. Right. So for bat population and disturbance types. So for disturbance types, we, uh, uh, with a graph on the left, so, so we actually documented um, around nine, uh, nine or 
10 disturbance types. So we have uh, for the nest. So this corresponds to edible nest, uh, swiftlet nest, uh, guano extraction, tourism, uh, graffiti, uh, speleothem collection, and then you have bat hunting, garbage collection, and kainin, which uh, occurred outside of the cave, of course. And then um, the most prevalent disturbance types uh, uh, among the 22 caves that we surveyed is soufflet nest connection and collection and guano mining or guano collection, uh, guano extraction. And <clears throat> most of the caves, 17 out of the 22 had at least, well, three to four disturbance types. So a lot of these are in combination. So you have nesting, uh, collection of nest. Uh, there's also guano collection on the side. And of course, some of these caves uh, are all, have also been visited by, by tourists. Um, and then um, looking at the bat population index uh, for, for the graph on the right. So we, 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 we plotted down uh, the number of uh, per, per cave. So we estimated, uh, we, we assigned a population index of none, okay, uh, which means of course no bats. So if it's low, uh, less than 100, uh, moderate is 101 to 1,000, and high is uh, more than 1,000 bat individuals. So uh, we uh, unfortunately we cannot I uh, cannot we cannot perform exact population estimates. It's very very well, almost next to impossible. So I followed this this uh, assignment of index following Hector Arita's uh, seminal paper. On, on in 19, 19, 1993 when he worked in uh, the caves of the Yucatan Peninsula in, in Mexico. So this essentially uh, re um, resembles a logarithmic scale, base, base zero, base one, base two, base three, and so on. So what we see here in the graph uh, on that population index is that uh, almost 60% of the surveyed caves had either no or very, very, uh, very few bats. So the, 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 the portion of the non and the low, so which corresponds to almost 60%. And, <clears throat> and a very, very few bat, very, very few, few cases had more than a thousand bat individuals. So uh, although um, you still have uh, further um, research has to, to look into this, so it seems that there's an uh, intimate relationship between disturbance at caves and uh, with bat population uh, or, and or the status of the, the bat population. And what we're seeing here is that uh, uh, the caves with low population, bat population index would also have a very uh, high number of disturbance types. Okay, so uh, for the conclusion for, uh, on this, um, for, for this first chapter. So cave bat surveys across a wide landscape. So be it an island-wide or a province-wide scale and incorporating measurements of cave characteristics and disturbance assessment uh, can provide valuable information for management and conservation. So examples of these information are, you know, the bat species list, list. So if you do this kinds of survey, so you have this bat species list and What's happening usually, and I've also um, uh, documented this in other cave, uh, in other islands that we did uh, cave surveys, bat surveys, and then other published uh, literature as well, is that uh, there's a high percentage of bat diversity that is coming from from caves, and that can contribute to a very substantial portion of what 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 are the bat species that are known for 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 that for that locality. So in Subihan, so bats can be a, 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 a caves can be a, a significant source of, of bat diversity in, let's say, in a province or in an island. And uh, conducting this, um, you know, uh, systematic bat surveys, you can also determine the extent and effect of cave disturbance to bats. So here in my, in, in my, in my studies that uh, we've determined um, how many kinds of uh, disturbance types are present, and is it uh, you can determine the prevalence of these disturbance types across these uh, um, number of caves. And using bat population index, although in the absence of a of a 
uh, an absolute population estimate, uh, to a certain extent, it can monitor the, the response of bats to, to disturbance uh, by looking at, their, at the, the indices. Then, of course, uh, using uh, the correlates uh, for bat species richness, you know, using um, these correlates as uh, what, are, what, what are the relationship on, on species diversity is that uh, there's, this, there's predictive uh, measure uh, this is very, very important in categorizing and prioritizing caves for management and conservation. So essentially what, what, what can be done is, uh, this is actually a shout out to, 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 uh, to, to groups that are conducting cave assessment, particularly in the government, is that uh, we can use several proxies in, in, in determining what are the caves that can be, can be protected or can be managed uh, by looking into species richness and then of course, by looking into other uh, attributes of the caves as well. Uh, lastly, uh, um, of course, uh, this kind of survey would, would definitely contribute uh, very substantially in terms of uh, natural history data. Uh, I've, for this, I've looked into reproductive condition. So it has determining reproductive condition on bats uh, would have a very, very significant implication to conservation in, in, in caves because um, a lot of caves here in the Philippines has not, uh, uh, have been open to, for tourism. And what we have to note is that um, the breeding season for bats, uh, the, this, this, this period is the most, uh, they're the most vulnerable to disturbances and oftentimes would lead to, to, to disruptions in their, in their breeding activity. And oftentimes there would be uh, fatalities or mortalities, particularly with, with juveniles. So uh, in order to, 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 um, no, to do some management, uh, semblance of management in case, you have to determine the, the, the reproductive condition of the, the, the bats that are residing. In those uh, in those caves, okay. So, the uh, I think uh, this ends my my first chapter. Uh, should I continue to the, to the, the the second chapter, sir, uh, to my panel? Maybe. I guess uh, you can continue to the. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Right, uh, for, for chapter two, so this uh, on seasonal variation in bat diversity and abundance in Pating Bato Cave Complex, uh, Polilio Island, Philippines. Uh, the objectives of, uh, of this chapter is um, you know, sample the bats in four caves across multiple misnetting events and different times of the night. So you have this temporal uh, condition. Uh, number two is to determine uh, how species richness and abundance vary with, with climatic season. So I, I actually uh, sampled uh, the bats in, in these caves uh, on during the wet and dry season. And the last is a determined relationship between seasonal fluctuation of species richness and abundance with bat reproductive phenology. Okay. So going back, so in 2013, so the, the first, first chapter uh, that was from a, our 2009 survey, so for this uh, second chapter, uh, this came from our 2013 uh, survey. So we zone in on Puting Bato, uh, well, White Rock. So there are, there are four caves there. Uh, okay, uh, they're named, simply named uh, Cave 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, so you may be uh, kayo bakit you back at 3, 4. So uh, during our survey in 2009, so we designated uh, one cave as cave three, and then another cave we designated as cave four. And then later on, uh, as we explored the cave and we realized that it was connected to each other. So, well, the name stuck. Um, it was already, you know, ginagamit na ng mga estudyante, uh, ng mga professors, particularly in, in cave ecology class. So we stuck to the name. So the total lengths, uh, uh, these caves vary in terms of, of total length. So from 51 meters to 247 meters. So as you can see here uh, on a, in a Google map uh, where, where the locations are, where, where the locations of the, 
the cave entrances. So they're, they're relatively near to each other. So separated by at least 100 meters from, for example, for, for cave two and cave five. Uh, for cave five and cave three, four, more than 100 meters. So, so relatively they're, they're near to each other. So it's within that uh, limestone forest block within, within Puting Bato. Okay. <clears throat> Right, so this is what uh, the entrances of the of the caves look like. So for yeah, uh, as you can see, caves one, two, and three, four have large entrances, and then you have uh, cave five. Uh, you have um, two entrances at I uh, know, but relatively small. So cave one has an, a total length of about 125 meters. About there are about two entrances. Uh, cave two relatively short, uh, about 77 meters, uh, but two entrances as well. Cave three four is uh, substantially long, longer, 247 meters with three entrances. And then for cave five, uh, which is the, the, the shortest uh, with 51 meters, uh, it, also, it only has one uh, entrance. All right, so comparing the 2009 and the 2013 fieldwork in terms of the methods that we employed. So for the 2009, as I've just, uh, re, um, relayed earlier. So we had a survey total of 22 caves. Uh, we did this uh, between May and June. So we captured a total of 16 bat species. And then nine species of those were found in Puting Bato. Um, we did miss netting uh, at the entrance or at the entire length. But most of the time uh, we did, uh, uh, we, we, we had, we captured the, the bats while walking uh, across the, the entire length of the cave. And we only did a one-time sampling per event per cave back in 2009. So for 2013, so we've now we focused on the four caves in Puting Bato, so one to four. And we did, uh, we sampled in two seasons, uh, in during the dry season, May to June, and um, during the wet season, well, uh, November to December. And like I said, we did repeated mist net at the entrance, uh, at least five nights per cave. And of course, two different climate, climate types. Uh, so, so this repeated mist netting at entrance. So we made sure that we don't uh, conduct mist netting at uh, the same cave for two consecutive nights or two, three consecutive nights. So what we do is we spread out our, our, our effort so if we, let's say, sample in cave one, it will be, so we're gonna to return to cave one after three or four nights. So, so that's the, you know, uh, our, our sampling regime. All right, so for bat diversity, so as I mentioned before, uh, in 2009, we captured, uh, we documented nine species and putting bato one and four, or one and five. And in 2013, just for putting bato, we recorded 17 species. And one of those cave, cave three and four had 13 species and looking into uh, published literature on cave bats in the Philippines, not too many, uh, take note. Uh, it's probably the most species cave in, in the country. And some of the notable records that we, uh, during the studies that uh, our capture of Hipposiderus coronatus so prior to our work, uh, well, prior to 2000s, uh, this species, very um, poorly known species, is known only from the type specimen, a single type specimen in Northern Mindanao, uh, specifically at Lake Mainit. So uh, this was discovered and uh, described in 1871 and hasn't been captured since. So we, we, we recaptured this uh, during the study. So it's about 100, 30 years after its discovery, after its description. So we, and for, the, for the longest time, we thought it was uh, extinct, uh, especially during um, mammal assessments for IUCN. Uh, we always listed that, that as poorly known, uh, data deficient, probably extinct. So, uh, so with this study, we, we've rediscovered this and a very enigmatic species. And then, uh, in this study, we also captured Hipposiderus lecaguli. So this is a relatively new record for, for the entire country, for the Philippines. Uh, it was first recorded in 1995 by, by Dane Balete, so published in Asia Life Sciences, I think. So poor, very poorly known. Uh, and uh, 
um, uh, Gabor Sorba uh, is, uh, from, from Czech Republic. Uh, and his book actually um, commented that uh, the, the, the Pilsen population is very poorly known and uh, this may warrant it's probably a new species. And actually in the Philippines, uh, based from uh, Larry Heaney's uh, um, synopsis of Philippine mammals website, uh, this bat is known only from four localities. Uh, in I think in Isabella, in Mindoro, and Mount Banahao. Um, I think uh, I forgot the other one. So yeah. All right. So from my um, objectives, I'm uh, going to compare uh, the dry and wet season uh, using index comparison. So I used uh, Shannon Diversity Index, the good old Shannon Diversity Index from H H Prime. Uh, because uh, Shannon Diversity Index uh, combines into one number both the species richness and the abundance of that that species. So, so you only have uh, you have this one one figure for uh, well, one number, and we compare that um, the the diversity indices for the dry and wet season for each cave using Hutchison T Hutchison's T test. So essentially, this Hutchison's T test or the diversity T T test. Um, determines significance uh, between the, no, the dif uh, determines if the, 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 the difference between the two indices are significant. So here listed in the table, so for, yeah, for caves one, one to five. So we had, for example, for cave one, uh, the Shannon index is 1.3, and then the wet, during the wet season is 1.15. So as you can see here, uh, for caves one, three, four, and five, the difference in the, the diversity index is uh, are significant. So for cave two, it's uh, it's um, the p-value is uh, more than 0 0.05, and uh, for caves one and five, there's significantly higher diversity index during the dry season, whereas for caves for cave three and four. Uh, the diversity index was higher during the wet season. Uh, what about captures and accumulation curve? So the first graph shows you uh, the, the, the species that we captured and the numbers of individuals uh, per um, during the dry dry season, which is uh, um, indicated by the black black bars and for the wet season uh, with gray. So for cave one during the dry season, we captured uh, 11 species, about 347 individuals. Uh, what's unique, uh, the unique species that we captured for just for dry season are Embalinura alecto, uh, Rhinolophus rufus and Rhinolophus macrotis. For the wet season uh, indicated by your gray bars, uh, it's much lower, uh, nine species, 129 individuals. And the unique species was Synopterus brachiotis. And looking at the at the graph below, uh, the, the the lower graph. So these are the uh, the accumulation species accumulation curves, rarefaction curves. So as you can see, uh, there's higher rate of accumulation during the dry season. So more species were 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 were, were captured uh, <clears throat> as we 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 sample uh, repetitively uh, repetitively. Uh, on that cave. And what is also indicated here is that there's no asymptote, or meaning uh, there's no curve leveling uh, for both seasons. So this means that there's still uh, some species that, uh, that were not captured during our work during the dry and wet season. So there might be some species there that remains uncaptured or remains undocumented. But combining the wet and dry season uh, captures uh, as you can uh, see here uh, on the rarefaction curve. So uh, it is now almost near asymptote or the curve is already leveling. So the combining combination of the wet and dry season um, uh, sampling has revealed that uh, almost all of the species were already documented at least. Okay, so for the uh, comparing the 2009 and the 2013 survey, so during 2009, we only captured two species, but with repetitive sampling in 2013, combining as well the dry and wet season. So we documented 
12 species, so 600 times, 600% increase in the, the, the number, 600, yeah, 600 percent increase in the, in, the, uh, in the number of species documented. Okay, for cave two, so, um, so for, um, for dry season, during the dry season, so 10 species were captured, but 273 individuals as well. So uh, the unique species were Rhinolophus macrotis and Minneopterus riversi. Uh, as opposed to wet season. So we captured a um, similar number of species, uh, but with relatively lower individuals. So the unique species were uh, Hippocederus lecaguli and Hippocederus pygmaeus. So Hippocederus lecaguli, I think was captured at the almost at the last day of our survey during the wet season. And similar to cave one. So um, well, there's also an, a higher rate of accumulation during the dry season and uh, no asymptotes, uh, whether it's during the dry or wet season, or uh, we combined it to the capture efforts, um, were seen uh, in terms of species accumulation curves. So this uh, will, uh, tells us that uh, there could be some species that remain uncaptured. And comparing the 2009 to 2013 survey, so uh, two, two species during the 2009, and then in 2013, uh, we documented 11 species in all. So for cave three and four, uh, uh, the situation here has been reversed. Although um, uh, the dry season, uh, we captured nine species and 264 individuals, uh, but during the wet season, uh, more species were were, were documented, uh, although a relatively lower uh, number of captures. So the unique species were um, for, for wet season would be your Synopterus, uh, Ionicterus pelea, both uh, fruit bats, and then you have Rhinolophus philippinensis and Myotis macrotarsus. And looking at the, the, um, the accumulation curves as well, so similar to, to Cave 2, um, there's, uh, but no, um, well, different from Cave 2. So the higher species accumulation rate was observed uh, during the wet season. And of course, uh, similar to cave two, um, um, there, uh, we didn't observe any curve leveling. So which signifies uh, some uncaptured species. Uh, and comparing that, um, so in 2009, so we had four species and then in 2013, so we have 13 species all in all. So for, for K5, um, so K5 is a relatively a smaller cave, so about 50 meters in the total length. So we would expect, uh, of course, we expected uh, to have lower number of captures and species as well. So for, for the dry season, we captured about six species and 44 individuals. Uh, we had, um, uh, which, uh, the unique for that season was uh, Kinochirus jagori, a fruit bat, Miniopterus australis, and Myotis uh, macrotarsus. For the wet season, it's relatively lower, uh, five species and uh, eight individuals. Uh, uh, surprisingly, we captured Ionicterus pilea. It's probably uh, not dwelling really during in, at the interior of the cave, but probably at the, 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 the cave entrance and Hypsiderus uh, diadema. So, here for dry season, it's almost close to asymptote, if you can see on the, the accumulation curve. So it's now beginning to level out or, or reach plateau. But of course, with uh, definitely with higher accumulation rate. For the wet season, um, the, there's no asymptote as well. Uh, and of course, with, with the combined dry and wet season captures, um, no asymptote was, was reached. So as you can see here, uh, comparing 2009 and 2013, so uh, there was an increase in, uh, in three species uh, during our, uh, the 2013 survey. Right, so with regards to reproductive condition and fluctu fluctuations in bat captures. So on the, the, the first graph on, on the left, uh, this shows the adult female male captures during the dry and wet season and uh, the, the graph on the, on the right. 
uh, your pregnant and subadults uh, captures during the dry and wet season. So as you can see here, uh, significantly more females were captured during the, the dry season. So this is reminiscent of the, the data uh, that we also observed during, during the 2009 survey in my chapter one. And uh, the number of, of, of males actually is relatively the same between the dry and the, the wet season. So 258 during the dry season, 273 during the wet season. And the number of females drastically lowered during the wet season. So from, uh, from 659, it plunged to 164 individuals. And uh, looking at the graph on your right, um, we, we documented uh, uh, from the uh, 659 females that we documented, uh, 411 of those during the dry season or 62% were pregnant. Um, <clears throat> yeah, or, or pregnant. And uh, a majority of the, the number of species that we've documented also exhibited pregnancies. And if you compare that in the, the wet season, so uh, there, we only documented about seven pregnant bats. So very, very substantial you know, decrease, very, very different uh, scenario in terms of uh, schedules of pregnancy. And we've also documented here a high number of subadults or those that are already weaned or um, have already uh, fly flown out from their mothers, so in comparing uh, during the wet season, so 124 uh, versus 11 during the dry season. So essentially, what, what what's happening here is that with a high number of females during during the, the the dry season during the months of May and June, and the high number of pregnant bats. So this definitely points to formation of maternity roost during the the dry season. And uh, what's happening here is that there's also synchronization. Uh, so definitely there's seasonality of pregnancies of the breeding season for, for, for these bats. But uh, we're also seeing synchronization of pregnancies on, across different species of bats here, here on Polillo Island. Okay, oops. Okay, uh, looking into temporal patterns in bat captures. So, so part of our, Part of my studies um, comparing um, the number of captures and species diversity. If we try to capture bats during uh, early morning or during midnight or early evening. So we compare that uh, as you can see here in the graph. So for early evening and midnight and early morning. So for the early morning, uh, we devoted 60 net hours there. Um, uh, setting our nets at the front at the entrance. So we captured a total of 587 individuals representing 15 species. For midnight, so relatively less young number of net hours, but it's really, really hard to, to, to wake up during the uh, during midnight and you know uh, uh, do, do some netting there. So relatively, although relatively low you know, uh, number of net hours, which of course consequently has a relatively lower number of individuals. But the number of species is not too too different, and then for the early evening um, <clears throat> early evening session, so sixty four net hours and uh, close to seven hundred individuals were captured, uh, representing fifteen species. So, um, using a Welsh test, Welsh F test, uh, a Welsh ANOVA, so we found that uh, there's no significant variation in terms of number of captures. Uh, in mean captures <clears throat> among the time interval. So uh, the, 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 the difference was not significant. And then, um, although I've not shown here, so there's almost the same set of species for, for, for early AM, for early morning and early, um, early morning and early night. So essentially there's almost the same. So if you, if you capture bats during the early evening, you're gonna get the same, probably gonna get almost the same set of species if you compare that with, with early early morning uh, capture. So for midnight, so relatively less in number of species. So essentially uh, all that was uh, captured during midnight, uh, the species that were documented were also documented uh, during early morning and early evening. 
Right. So uh, I've also attempted to apply some um, in, 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 on my, in my data, uh, some of the, the publications, the recent publications that have uh, came out on, on, on bat caves, uh, on cave bats. Uh, this paper uh, entitled Bat Cave Vulnerability Index, BCVI. I think some of you are aware of this index. Uh, a holistic rapid assessment tool to identify priorities for effective cave conservation topics. So it's written, published by Prisler, Tanalgo. Prisler, uh, probably know, uh, definitely know him. Uh, it's a rising star in, in Southeast Asia for, for bat ecology. And co authors are C. C. John Aris Tabora and uh, Chrysler's advisor, Alice Hughes. So here uh, he devised a, an, in, um, an index. Uh, to determine its uh, the, the uh, degree of vulnerability, uh, for, in order to 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 assess uh, you know which uh, how to prioritize these caves for you know for, for conservation, especially uh, in, in in DNR. So he made use of two uh, values uh, in the paper. So we have biotic potential, which pertains to you know, species richness and abundance. So uh, so this also includes uh, some of the traits of the species. So if it's endemic, uh, or if it's, uh, what's the IUCN status or the red list status of that species. So so there's an uh, so there's an equation in order to, to to derive the biotic potential of each cave. And then he also made use of biotic vulnerability or the threat status of cave. So what what he did here, what, what the paper did here is that um, listing out. Uh, gauging the, the the degree of vulnerability of those of those caves. So in terms of uh, how disturbed are these caves, how many disturbance gradients or uh, disturbance types are present, um, in terms of several disturbance types. So if you have guano mining, bat hunting, tourism, uh, or even use in in religious purposes. So he, he, they constructed this matrix. Uh, with biotic potential values, with uh, biotic vulnerability values, and then matrix, and then and determine uh, well the, the the priority level of 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 a certain cave. So, if a certain cave has this uh, biotic potential value of one and the biotic vulnerability value of a, so that's one a that is designated as high priority. So I adopted this index to my to my data in, on on Polilio Island, and this is sort of come up. So there are definitely varying uh, scores, uh, particularly with uh, the biotic potential scores. So, for example, in Cave One, so the dry season potential biotic score was one hundred eight thousand three hundred forty eight. Compared with wet season, so 87,300. Um, similar with cave two, um, biotic potential was uh, more than twice compared to wet season. And on for for cave three and four, uh, three, sorry, I didn't uh, um, change that. For cave three, so it's a much lower um, biotic potential during the dry season as compared with wet season. And then for the dry, uh, cave four. <clears throat> uh, it's much higher during the dry season, and using that, you know, applying the the, the BCVI matrix, so there's this notable changes in the BCVI scores, <clears throat> especially um no discrepancy uh, with the wet and dry season. So, for example, for K one, the the BCVI score for dry season is. 1B, which is a uh, high priority. And then uh, applying the, the, the values uh, in, in wet season, so naging 2B na lang, so it's medium priority. Uh, and for, for what's also dramatic here is for cave three, wherein our uh, dry season, 3B lang yung, yung kanyang uh, bio, uh, BCVI index, and then our, our sampling during the wet season, it became one B. It's a uh, high priority. So what is uh, what we're seeing here is that, uh, of course, uh, I, I've shown you on, in the previous uh, slides is that 
the, the discrepancy in the VCI values has to be attributed uh, definitely with the fluctuations in abundance and species richness. So this abundance and species richness, of course, is intimately tied with the reproductive phenology of these, these bats. So some of them would have higher uh, population numbers during the dry season, or some of them would have higher numbers during the wet season. And of course, <clears throat> and uh, some of these are driven by the numbers of the females or sometimes the number of sub-adults, uh, wherein during the dry season, they were still unweaned or still attached to their mother. And then during the dry season, uh, during the wet season, they're already free flying. Okay, so this comes into four um, the significance of sampling, uh, the, the 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 sampling intensity. So as you can see here, uh, I've shown you in comparing from my first chapter, which we did with single sampling, and with the multiple sampling in chapter for for this presentation for this chapter. So in most cases, there were dramatic increases in the number of species recorded. So this brings to four um, some of the efforts that have been done in working on cave assessments, particularly uh, in the Philippine government where they've done cave assessments uh, in the country. So uh, a lot can change. And this uh, BCVI, uh, the Bat uh, Cave Vulnerability Index, I think it's in the process of being adopted by the Philippine government. And uh, we have to, to be very, very careful. I mean, we have to uh, emphasize that um, <clears throat> single sampling event uh, is not the final thing in terms of deter uh, determining you know, uh, the species richness and abundance, and of course, deriving the, the BCI, BCVI values. Okay, so for my conclusion, so, uh, very few work uh, have been done on propulsive bat sampling, uh, propulsive bat sampling in caves, actually uh, doing systematic surveys of, of bats. Uh, it's very, uh, very, very few. Uh, we've known only about less than oh, 11 or uh, no, less than 10 papers has come out uh, on focusing on bat surveys in caves. And uh, well, I've been saying this uh, even five years ago, uh, cave biology, the Philippines is still in its infancy. So uh, of course here in the Philippines, uh, it's a university that offers uh, you know, a subject on, on cave biology. Okay, so I've also um, shown here the importance of repeated sampling in caves, you know, multiple netting seasons and doing it across multiple netting, uh, netting events and uh, at least uh, two seasons. Uh, so the, the, the difference between um, doing that is very, very dramatic, leading to a much higher species richness, definitely. And this uh, variation in abundance and species richness I've shown here uh, in, in, in my presentation, uh, Reproductive phenology can be a very um, significant driver of this variation in abundance and species richness. <clears throat> and multiple sampling events, uh, uh, like I did here, uh, may have implications on calculations of cave vulnerability index scores and assigning prioritization. So, so if you do a, just a sampling of a cave one time, there could be a danger of false negatives or false reporting. So as what my, 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 my data has shown that you know, uh, a lot can happen. A lot, uh, what you documented at one time may be different if you do repeated sampling on a different time. Okay, so this ends my, my chapter one and two presentation. So this presentation is dedicated to my wife, Nelay, oh, nakabulit pa. and my son, uh, Pedro S. Alviola V. Uh, si Pip, uh, both are COVID-19 negative. Yay! Buti pa sila, ako hindi. Pero matatapos na yung quarantine ko in the next two or three days. Okay, so uh, just a um, pulling shout out lang. Uh, my, there's also the chapter three presentation. Uh, next week, this is on June 1, 2021, uh, same time, 1 to 3 p.m. So the title is uh, Echolocation Calls of Insectivorous Bats in the Karst Forest of Polillo Island. So 
in behalf of uh, my, 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 my committee and, uh, uh, and the DPL Museum of Natural History and Department of the Forest Biological Sciences, I'm inviting you to, to watch as well my, my presentation next week. Okay, maraming salamat po. All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, Sir Philip. And uh, congratulations on your presentation. We Thank are you, inviting the audience to ask uh, some few questions uh, to our speaker on his, um, especially on his research outputs. We have a period of 15 to probably 15 to 20 minutes to accommodate some of your questions before we go to the uh, expert panel review. So mm -hmm. please uh, just uh, put your questions on the chat box. And I hope we can get um, your questions immediately so we can start. Hey, from King Roy Tyron Ombrosa. So he's, I think he's a student from UPLB SESAM. And uh, the literature about bat identification is uh, kind of scarce. Would you recommend, uh, can you recommend some? And uh, because he will be using it for his thesis about uh, bite diversity in uh, Agusan del Sur. Yeah, uh, there's, well, at least in, here in the Philippines, there's uh, pa lang din, uh, first and foremost, uh, ang Biblia, uh, the Key to the Bats of the Philippine Islands by Nina Engel and Larry Heaney. Uh, it was published in 1992 in Fieldiana Zoology. Uh, I have a PDF of, I think, ba? Oh, I think I have a PDF of that, of that file. So yung pa rin yung talang ginagamit namin. Uh, for bat identification. So there, there's a dichotomy ski. It's probably the easiest dichotomy ski I've, that I've encountered. Kaya nga ako siguro nag, nag, nag bat ecology. Uh, and then you also have uh, the, the Mammals of Luzon Island, uh, 2016. So it's a book. So may mga pictures done, of course. Uh, uh, may mga pictures ng mga bats done. Uh, illustrations, very nice illustration by, by Velizar Simonovsky. Uh, and... Uh, and sometimes, especially for, for new records, determining new records of, of bat species. I mean, we've been encountering new, new country records. So for this, sometimes we consult uh, Corbett and Hill, 1992, the mammals of the Indo-Malayan region. Uh, it's available at the UPLB main library. And you also have the bats of Crow Island by Tiga Kingston. So Crow, it's malapit to sa anak Krakato. May mercy ng... Sampling so there's a book. I have a book, um, um, Paped, Paped, Sigur Paseros, or I don't know. Hmm, wala na akong COVID. <laughs> Pero yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure if it's available online. I think you can buy it through Amazon or eBay, but I don't know. So, but for the Philippines, very, very few. Yan nga. Uh, bats of the Phil uh, key to the Bats of the Philippine Islands, okay, kana done. Sold kana done, I think. Yeah. All right, thank you. From uh, from Malsha Bandara, sir, uh, what are the other microclimatic uh, conditions uh, which you have surveyed or you have uh, actually measured during the survey? Oh, it was just uh, temperature and relative humidity, which mm. I, I showed. So, sure. so, well, this is back in 2009. So, uh, wala high tech na mga, ano dun, mga devices during that yeah. time. So, 11 years, 12 years ago. So we're doing the psychrometer, slingshot psychrometer, and then you know, uh, maybe mid temperature, mid digital thermometer. Then, but uh, yeah, so 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 it's just uh, temper, no, not the relative humidity and uh, temperature. Yeah, but uh, any like any <clears throat> any uh, what they call this? Would you are you planning to to do? Uh, more research which would would involve uh, other microclimatic conditions right 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 yeah 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 uh well there, back in 2013 i had a student who, who did his uh undergraduate thesis there and it also included wind speed mm -hmm. uh well we, uh parang device non weather tracker uh and then it measures the wind speed and what he found out that uh, increases in wind speed uh, corresponds during the emergence and return of the bats. Oh. So in between, wala mm -hmm. masyadong wind movement, uh, perceptible breeze, but nevertheless, wala. Pero during the emergence and exit, so meron kasi yung pagaspas nung, nung, mga, nung mga panike. And, I, 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 and he found out, uh, you know, uh, look, digging into literature on the subject, is that uh, some of the, the arthropods, 
uh, especially of course with those uh, polymorphic uh, cave polymorphic uh, you know medyo ano ito? Uh, meron na silang cave characteristics let's say blind uh, colorless mahaba yung antenna some of them actually would rely on these outside cues to determine kailan yung umaga at gabi Mm-hmm. with the movement of the the bats uh with the wind that is generated by the movement the flight of the bats so gagalo galo yung kanila no? their antenna would, would would signal and it's periodic periodic pertaining to night and day kasi ganun din yung labas at pasok ng ng panika mm-hmm. yeah right, okay. very interesting very interesting so from okay. Ma- mamdes uh fernandez um See, some of our Wildlife 101 mm-hmm. students are watching right now. What advice can you give them, uh, give to young researchers who want to study on bats? Any tips on where or where to start? Hello, Ma'am Des. Hi, Prof Des. Good evening. Uh, good afternoon. I'm going to follow the seminar. Yeah, I'm, uh, Wildlife 101, the, 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 the subject that we're teaching time and time again, is, is a very, very good platform for 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 for, for students to, to get a a career on, on wildlife biology. Uh, of course, um, time and time and again, uh, lagi namin sinasabi mga teachers, of course, is uh, yung dedication, of course, uh, the skill. Uh, pwede, wag sanang maging, uh, siguro, wag sanang gawing parang as a substitute na lang yung wildlife biology kasi hindi ka makapag-med. Uh, I mean, it's a totally different thing. It's, it's a very novel profession, uh, very exciting profession, and it's sometimes mas importante pa. Okay. But uh, otherwise, uh, Yeah, dedication. Listen to your advisors, especially like lalo na ngayon, uh, lahat na ng estudyante, magtitisis na, you really, really need to do, ano, uh, to listen to your advisors. Gaya ni Ma'am Des, uh, she's, she's great uh, with, 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 with students, so makinig kayo sa kanya. <laughs> ano, I mean, yeah. All right, thank you. All right. Uh, uh, wait, sir. Uh, yeah. We have a questions from uh, we have two more questions before we start the uh, expert panel review. So we have a question from Christian Lucanias. Uh, Sir Philip, were you able to observe seasonal uh, differences in the population of bats with respect to their feeding guides, uh, whether it's frugivorous uh, uh, guilds, uh, wet uh, versus dry, yeah, insectivorous yeah, 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 yeah. uh, for insectivorous, wet versus dry. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Christian. Uh, thank you very much for 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 that question. Uh, no, uh, we did not. Uh, although I did not investigate on that specifically. Uh, but looking at the, the values and remembering the number of captures uh, from from my raw data, uh, no, we did not. We did not. It's all across the species. No, for example, for fruit bats. Uh, most fruit bats no mas mataas yung mas marami nakuha during the 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 dry season or the during their breeding season and as first for a substantial majority of their of uh, the insectivorous bats ganun din mas marami pa rin mas marami ding nahuli sa sa during the the dry season or during the breeding season and uh, this points to uh, uh, at least some of them points to yung as reproductive phenology would be that probably the more significant uh, driver in terms of abundance rather than um, their, their guild being, whether it's an insectivore or a fruit bat. But yeah, but looking into that, you know, our, my raw data, no, uh, it probably didn't, you know, uh, wouldn't have a measurable, I think, effect on that. Yeah. I hope that answers, uh, Christian. Okay, thank you. So, uh, unfortunately, this will be our last question. It's from Katrina Erika Manalo. And uh, she's asking any personal tips on effective handling of bats, especially uh, the insectivorous ones, since they seem to be more sensitive than, than the fruit bats and they die easily. Uh, prior to, to the pandemic, of course, we have, we're now having a pandemic. I am having COVID-19, actually. So our, 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 you know, the way we work with bats, kamay uh, lang, you know, we, we, we tinatanggal namin yung, yung bats sa mist nets using our bare hands. Uh, then, yeah, pagkataos, punas lang sa, sa, sa damit and then kakain na. Okay, it's very, very dangerous. I mean, we've been doing that for more than 20 years and it's very, very dangerous. So, but right now, when you're handling bats, uh, take the necessary safety precaution. So ngayon yung ginagawa namin is we're, we're donning um, 
PPE, so yung parang astronaut suit, or at least um, isolation gowns. So and then, of course, you have the mask, you have uh, goggles or face shields, and then we also have gloves. For fruit bats, we use leather gloves or mittens, medyo makapal-kapal. And uh, for insectivorous bats, we use, well, at, uh, at least I use double nitrile gloves. So dalawang, dalawang layer ng nitrile or vinyl gloves. Kasi medyo mahirap pawakan yung insectivorous bats, like, like, like you said. Mahirap pawakan siya with, with, with gloves. Very, very delicate, very, very sensitive. Sa konting pressure change, pressure lang sa kamay mo, they will end up dead. And of course, uh, we also use yung yung pangganchilyo from for cross stitch in the needle so it's very very effective actually for disentangling yung mga maliliit na yung mga nylon threads uh, that are found uh, naka enveloped dun sa bat so ang mangyayari dito is you only have to hold the bat very delicately uh, at least hindi siya makawala and then you apply the 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 cross stitch uh, needle Uh, kasi hindi mo siya mahahawakan using the gloves para maghimay-himay. So very very effective. I, um, I, I hope you can ano, um, acquire that skill. Madali lang naman, madali lang. All right. So magkakanchilyo <laughs> pala sa field. Oh, yan. Sorry, yan. Okay, so uh, this is not a question but uh, a comment from uh, Shara Icardo and she's a local of Bordeos. Oh. And She just wants to send uh, her deepest uh, appreciation to you, Sir Philip, for looking into the caves and bats of Bolillo. And she's uh, excited for this uh, webinar because uh, she she stumbled across uh, your paper on the bats of Bolillo when she was doing her undergraduate uh, thesis. Uh, so thank you very much. So um, unfortunately, that will be our last question and comment from the general audience. And may I ask the expert panel to turn on their camera if it's okay with you guys and your microphones and um, I would uh, like to turn over the floor to Dr. Ireneo Litt Jr. to moderate the expert panel forum. Sir June. Okay, thank you, Floor. Uh, at this time, I'm going to Sir uh, Nelson. Hi, Sir Nelson. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Do we have any question now? Yeah. Uh, or can I? yes, yeah, uh, First, I have to apologize. Uh, napasabay yung pa-exam ko ngayon, kaya nagmamadali ako magtanong. And second, I would like to congratulate the Sir, Sir Phil. Uh, I, I guess parang wala kang uh, COVID because your passion remains. No, I again nakita ko yung mga ano. Sorry lang. I appreciate that. Tatlong na. Tatlong linggo na ako sa mga Bartolino. I'm glad your family are safe. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So I have three uh, questions. Uh, when I came in, medyo nalik ako eh. Uh, considering that this is uh, under our uh, our department and it's all about, uh, more of, uh, I mean, uh, on about forest, about the ecosystem. Uh, and uh, I put here three things that you can uh, uh, include uh, in your discussions. Uh, On the climate, kanina may tanong about microclimate, uh, and you were able to gather some data starting 2009 and uh, several dates. Uh, I would like to request that uh, you include uh, the events that transpired during those periods, uh, events that are like, extreme, for example, uh, extreme dry, extreme wet. Uh, what's, what period was that? Uh, what month? Uh, would be good to uh, include that one in your discussion. Uh, you can uh, uh, put that one in your graph that during this period was an extreme weather or with extreme dry and so on. Uh, I guess that will add up don sa question kanina on microclimate kasi pwede ka na mabubalik, uh, you can go back 10 years, 5 years uh, using uh, pag-asa data. Probably you can... Uh, Yeah. request uh, information from them. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, that's, that's the first thing I need to uh, add you. And uh, for that matter, uh, kasi natatandaan ko, we have discussion on the different ecosystems. Uh, I suppose, uh, doon sa bawat ecosystems natin, we have descriptions of those ecosystems, including uh, the vegetation, yung mga fruiting, kasi some of them are, uh, are uh, dependent on fruits, others are insects. So I guess magiging uh, helpful ito. Uh, alam ko naman na meron pang ibang gumagawa nito sa area. 
uh, that you can add up kasi baka hindi mo na magawa uh, ang lahat ng ito. Uh, I recall kasi one time there was a question, hindi ko alam kay Dr. Fernando yata yun, uh, asking you, I, I, hindi ko na matandaan Dr. June Litt, na about aspect on strengthening informations about uh, the ecosystems on forests in particular kasi you are under FBS, parang ganun yung question niya. So, but nonetheless, because this is ecological, I would uh, uh, suggest that uh, uh, you uh, um, give more uh, information on the ecosystems uh, as you relate it to your major topic, which is your cave. And then second, uh, uh, are there some preference in terms of uh, cave ng mga bats? Kasi you have several caves, di ba, na tinitingnan. Meron ba silang preferential uh, bats uh, or caves na matatawag based on your data? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, it appears that way about, uh, yeah. based on their distribution and the uh, right. recurrence of frequency. So uh -huh. a lot of the species uh, actually would prefer large, long caves with large entrances. So first and foremost, these are your fruit bats. Uh, yeah. Since these fruit bats do not use echolocation calls, rather they use sight, mm -hmm. mainly sight. So what we're seeing is that they're found in caves that are large and also with large entrances as well. Uh, because they're, they use mainly sight, so they cannot actually navigate dun sa mga kweba na maliliit po yung entrances. So more often than not, when there's a, there's a small cave and the very small entrance, uh, you would not find um, um, you would not find fruit bats on those caves. Uh, there are also some um, species of rhinolophids and hypsiderids that are also found in um, in large caves as well. Uh, so these are no, uh, there's diadema. These are very very uh, relatively large species as well. But uh, there are some species like Minopterus shrebus, uh, Minopterus australis, the very small uh, vespers, uh, and Balanura alecto as well. Uh, these are found in small caves, sir. So I, I, I showed in, in the graph before that uh, and Balanura alecto is the most frequently encountered bat in all, most of the caves. So about uh, 13 caves out of the 22. So nakikita tong mga paniki na ito. And they seem to prefer caves now very small and small and small entrances. So uh, from there, uh, we're, we're, we're having this indication that uh, bats do have preference, uh, specific preference for various uh, cave attributes. All right. And the description of your bat anyway is included, right? Uh, yes, sir. And of course, uh, I've in the paper that uh you know um for for publication you know, sub, sub, submitted for publication it, this also includes some vegetation uh description That's right. uh, of the surrounding you know uh of uh, vegetation surrounding this case so nandun po sa, sa materials and methods uh, -oh. uh for the insects well, unfortunately i did not do that probably i can i can derive some data from previous uh bio 154 uh, uh work yung mga, yung mga ginagawa ng mga estudyante dati probably i can i can uh borrow at least uh, refer to that fun yeah. work and then, then last on sa vulnerability uh, uh ano yung mga parameters dito sa vulnerability that you have included uh, so that you can uh, uh produce this uh, vulnerability index yes sir uh, so there are two uh vulnerability index and biotic potential so each of those has their own equation po in order right. to come up with the ano. So, right. unang una po is number of species. Right. Uh. Number of individuals that were captured per species. Mm -hmm. uh, this is for biotic potential, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Yung distribution niya, is it endemic to the island or endemic to the country or mm -hmm. endemic to Southeast Asia or worldwide? So, bawat category meron pong corresponding uh. score. Tapos, right. uh, sunod is yung the level of threat status. So, kung right. least concern, mababa po ang score. Kung uh -huh. critical endangered, mataas po. So, that's for biotic potential and then may, may corresponding value po. Uh -huh. For vulnerability index, uh, ginagage mm -hmm. uh, po. For mm -hmm. vulnerability index, so dalawa po kasi yun eh. Mm -hmm. Biotic potential and vulnerability index. Tapos mm -hmm. po siya. So, for vulnerability index po, ay yung as level, degree of disturbance. All right. Uh -huh. 
So marami po mga disturbance types na nilagay si Chrysler, yung main author. So bat hunting, guano, distance. Actually, so these distance. Are more, these are more anthropogenic. Ano? Opo. Uh, totally Filipino, anthropogenic. Uh, sa abiotic. So yun, balikan natin yung uh, influence, for example, ng weather pattern, etc. Uh, can this Doon be... Sa, uh, sa vulnerability uh, index, wala po sir. Wala talaga. Walang, walang, walang abiotic. Sir. So it's more okay. of... Ano. Para bang tipong... Uh, Towards the end, baka mayroon kang information on uh, impact ng uh, climate change uh, on their populations, and their behavior, and so on. Ng, uh, cave. Yes. Uh, well, at the very least, um, from, from, from my data, this is a graph, uh, bats would respond uh, negatively with, with higher temperatures. Uh -huh. uh, more species are relative found in relatively lower temperature as compared to higher temperatures so that alone uh well with that you can tell that well with increasing temperatures outside would probably have a measurable effect during the temperature inside so of course even though ambient temperature inside the cave is remains constant all throughout they do still respond to ambient temperature outside of the cave which was actually done by my advisee that then, ano. So, kung may uh, commensurate increase sa lalabas, mm -hmm. ganun din po ang nangyayari sa loob ng kweba po. Uh, ganun din nangyayari. So, very extreme levels of temperature ganun, would have a proud deleterious effect dun sa, sa bat diversity sa loob. Uh, the same as well with uh, relative uh, humidity. Of course, this per, uh, closely tied with water balance and what have you. So, ganun, sir. Um, yeah. Definitely, magkakaro po talaga ng changes. Uh, Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Sir Nelson and Philip. Uh, Ma'am G has a question. Yes. Uh, Philip, congratulations. Maraming salamat po, Ma'am. Uh, okay. Um, I think I was the one who brought up the status of the forest uh, yes, ecosystem during our first seminar. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, sorry, ma'am. I can't recall. Uh, and, uh, my first is my... I have two important items that I would like to point out. First is on... Um, you are comparing data in 2009 and 2013. That's a period of about four years. Yes, I think you have to... Uh, in your introduction, you have to uh, discuss or put some statements about the degree of disturbance that has happened in that four years. Because uh, people or critics may question you, how, why are you going to compare uh, a four-year data interval? But if you discuss the level of disturbance that not much disturbance has taken place, etc., so what I would like to, you to do is to put some introductory statements that for your data to be valid for your difference, then you have to discuss the degree of disturbance that has happened within that four years. Kung wala namang masyadong disturbance, then pwedeng valid, okay? Yes, and then another important point that I'd like to make is again, relating to the forest uh, status, is it possible to, for you to correlate the um, presence of uh, flowers and fruits of the trees surrounding, within the uh, caves, surrounding the caves, and relate it to the uh, reproductive status? Bakit uh, hindi kaya dahil sa maraming pagkain, kaya ang season ng pregnancy or reproductive cycle a correlated sa dami ng pagkain in the surrounding and if you have some data on the fruiting and flowering behavior of the trees and uh, coconut di ba Mar madaming coconut Opo, doon Opo, which could be sources of nutrients that will add up to uh, okay. the uh, more explanation on okay. the phenology reproductive phenology of your Bats. I think you can, if there are several studies conducted already on the same area, you can gather it from there. Okay. Yes, and then you can also visit during the time na nag-sampling ka. Opo. Ano yung mga dominant trees 
na nagpo-fruit noon, lalo na ang coconut, ano yung ano doon, kasi these are important sources which you can relate to the reproductive phenology. And that would also integrate yung iyong research on bats with the surrounding ecosystem since you are in forestry. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, for the first question, ma'am, uh, looking at backtracking kung, uh, in terms of the degree of disturbance, uh, unfortunately, I don't have, I, I probably have data that I may not have included, but I can backtrack po, kasi marami pong nag-thesis ng undergrad during the 2013. So ginawa ako pong study nito in tandem with several students that were doing their, their thesis there. So I can, can probably backtrack and you know, look at those, those studies and then try to see if there were um, significant changes in terms of disturbance that has happened uh, in these caves. And probably gonna ask as well some of my contacts in some of the guides uh, in back now, though it's gonna be eight years of work of backtracking memory going back but uh but uh, the, the the main the, the the main source of data that i will probably look into is uh mga previous studies that have been done there mga undergraduate thesis po. Uh, but but yes ma'am very very important po na, na uh, kasi people yes, are uh, critic my question the validity of your comparison matter of four years yes ma'am yes ma'am well uh, I'm, I'm what i'm just saying here is that i'm not comparing the no species generated, but I'm comparing the manner of the methods that were used for uh, that that could have implications in in deriving species structure. This is more of the 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 the, the methods that were used for uh, in doing that. So that was from, you know, the forest. Uh, although we have studies that have been done um, mapping out phenology of fruiting trees, but not I, I'm not sure if uh, done in Polilio Island. I'm gonna check the the uh, the thesis undergraduate thesis of Grace Carino, uh, who's done uh, the, the the vegetation of Mount uh, of Polilio Island. Uh, Professor Ivy Lambio as well has done uh, some work on on the limestone forest in, in Polilio Island as well. So I'm gonna consult them and try to see uh, uh, some evidences of you know uh, pheno phenological events that has happened among uh, the size of trees. And of course, I'm going to refer to other publications as well that have been done. The Philippines, uh, for example, by Prof, uh, Dr. Duya, been doing that in Isabela province. Uh, Paul Heidemann, although this was done back in 1985, 1986, in Negros, um, uh, tried to see, you know, um, tried to whip that up in the, the discussion part of the paper, man. So, Apo. So this will be, you know, uh, parang, parang like you said, po, and I totally agree, this will harmonize yung, yung, the, the, the role of the forest, yung, yung significance of forest dun sa akin dissertation. Okay. okay. Yeah. Congratulations. Maraming salamat po. Any other, any question from the, <clears throat> yes, Ma'am Pao? Hi, Ma'am. Congrats, Flip. Maraming salamat po, ma'am. Um, since meron po tayong audience, um, tips lang, uh, Sir Flip, for best practices for cave bat research, siguro. Cave bat research. About, uh, first, siguro yung health condition ng tao. Uh, because I remember back then, uh, this was in Samal Island. Uh, well, naalala niyo po yun yung nahilo ako. <laughs> na ubusan ako ng ina kasi very low oxygen very low air kaya after noon nagkaroon na ako ng phobia going to caves actually very confined spaces so yung health condition of the of the student if you're going to do a cave uh, that would be first and foremost a consideration uh, of course if you're going to sample in caves siguro it should be much easier kung marami ng paniki marami paniki na nakikita doon so to make it work, work your while uh, to study them. Um, of course, your identification skills on bats, kasi mabilisa ng pag-capture, and then uh, often, and most of the time, you release at the site of the capture yung mga bats, so dapat yung identification skills is uh, praktisadong praktisado na po. And then, of course, uh, some of the caves that 
of course in the Philippines, uh, medyo malalayo. So logistics wise, uh, this will involve medyo marami rin pera na kaya kailanganin. So it's maganda talaga na you, uh, you have a, a grant. And well, tips, best practices po po, uh, if you can hire some experienced field te- technicians, all the better. Kasi um, you don't want, lalo na if an undergraduate, hindi ka pang masyadong sanay magtanggal ng panike, let's say 100 na panike, isang net, uh, you're gonna need a lot of help. You're gonna need expert help. Otherwise, it's gonna end up dead. So, uh, of course, uh, what are the questions that in terms of research or thesis? Ano po ba yung research uh, questions na kailangan, ano? Uh, very valid. It should be as much as possible. Hypothesis driven. So, uh, the best way is to, to, to uh, read a lot of literatures on, on cave bats. Okay, thank you. Um, just to follow up to yung sinabi ni ma'am, ma'am yes, ma'am. yeah on the comparison so you already mentioned that um, part of it is your methods kaya mas madami dun sa uh, 2013 sampling yes ma'am uh, it's more of the intensity of the methods that were employed in the 2013 was it because of a uh, longer sampling in the area or a uh, longer sampling po, uh, multiple sampling, tapos po uh, across two seasons. So, mm-hmm. po yung, um, and what other factors might explain the increase or the the high species diversity? You 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 mentioned seventeen species in one cave. Yes, ma'am. Opo, uh, thirteen species uh, in one cave. Thirteen. Opo. Uh, That's quite a lot, right? Yes, ma'am. Ano ma'am? That's quite a lot for That's quite probably the highest in the so far gang of main alam ko po is that's the highest for the whole Philippines. Yeah. And may dominant species ba? Uh for cave tree it's mostly fruit bats and yung hypocidarus diadema ma'am yung mga malalaki. So they're the the the, the most dominant among the assemblage group in that cave ma'am. Uh yes ma'am. Well uh yes well, so it's Nung during the 2009 kasi ang ginamit namin is pumasok na kami doon sa kweba. So yung Sagala method. And then for two or three hours until ano, uh, na, 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 na walk na namin yung cave. So there, doon namin, doon lang yung ano namin pag, pag document yung species diversity and numbers. And then of course, in, in most of the times, marami pong mga matataas sa chambers, cathedrals, like so hindi namin po maitaas yung aming yung net. So, marami pong mga nakakawala talagang ano so blah, blah. so whereas uh, back in 2013 when oh, when we went back so at the entrance lang and then we strategically placed that na somehow may maximum efficiency in capture so i think that spelled a lot of difference and we also trapped in multiple times of the night so early morning uh, early evening midnight so marami pong levels of ano of stratification in terms of capture new methods po. Maganda kasi may discuss yung community assemblage. Yes ma'am. Okay. Community assemblage. And then last question na before ma'am Ings. How important oh. is cave ecotourism in Polillo Island? And Yes ma'am. And what uh, 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 back in 2009 or even back in 2013 wala pong masyadong pumupunta sa sa Pulilio po eh, nung panahon na yon. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not a tourist destination at all. The whole island is not a tourist destination at all. Uh, during our time there, uh, I think uh, Dr. Lit will, will agree or disagree or Dr. Digia, eh, Dr. Dupo will agree. Uh, walang masyadong pumupuntang tourists during that time, especially in 2013. Very f- halos wala. But nowadays, uh, because of uh, internet, Facebook, and so uh, especially during the tourist season from February to, to June or even uh, for May, marami na pong pumupunta sa Pulilio Island. Uh, marami na rin mga tourist packages. And a lot of the destination in this tourist packages uh, would involve visit dun sa mga kweba, especially in Puting Bato. So uh, sometimes in teams of mga sampu, uh, pupunta dun. 
uh, during when we went there in April and uh, bumalik din for the thesis no uh, 2019 may mga tao din po pumupunta so marami pong ngayon it's totally different so the, the tourist condition especially for for the visitation of caves medyo mataas na po actually it's going to be very very significant no? okay so thank you saka na lang yung iba kong tanong Thank you, oh. Thank you, Ma'am Pao. Uh, we now have Ma'am Amy. Hey, po. Um, I have the same comment as uh, Ma'am G. Because I would like you to also take a look at how food affects the reproductive phenology. Uh, but you can backtrack using the data, for example, of uh, pollen calendars. Yung tingnan mo yung pollen calendars of existing uh, records of plants within the area para makita natin, uh, may effect ba to? Kasi with increased pollen, we also assume that they are flowering, magkakaroon ng fruits, mm. and even pollinators and arthropods to which uh, bats feed on may also okay. follow suit. Uh, tingnan lang natin if there are patterns that we could observe. And then uh, in terms of disturbance occurrences, I noticed that uh, the disturbance have equal weights, diba? Uh, when we Pardon. recorded them, uh -oh, whether Papa. if they're present or not. But uh, have you encountered, for example, any studies that give them weights, for example, na mas mabigat ang effect sa bats ng uh, cave tourism compared to uh, those collecting guano, for instance? Meron na bang ganong trend in terms of bat research? Uh, there are uh, trends. Actually, uh, what Ninia did here uh, for, for Samal Island is uh, parang did, did in assess yung degree of intensity ng bawat uh, disturbance type. Pero still on equal footing pa rin yung bawat disturbance type. But in other places in, in Southeast Asia, uh, it has been found out that tourist visitation uh, ano ba to? uh continuous uh parang tourist visitation has a drastic effect on 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 population numbers um not so much with bat hunting the Michelle although we, we do we did have uh may mga areas in the in across Southeast Asia that have you know uh responded uh negatively with bat hunting but <clears throat> not compared with uh tourist visitation uh, especially for you know more religious practices, uh, for guano mining definitely, and uh, yung mga large scale na mga operations like quarrying, uh, that has really impacted bat populations across Southeast Asia. In Polilio po, wala naman pong quarrying actually just sa, sa mga sapating bato or even in other parts ng mga pinuntahan po namin, you know, uh, mga kweba sa 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 pulilyo po but uh, yeah back uh quarrying would be a very very uh, major driver kaya lang naman na itanong kasi are there for example species of bats that tend to be more tolerant to disturbances meron bang bat species that are very sensitive to the slightest disturbance and mm -hmm. how would that affect our bat assessment mm -hmm. mom with, with, with the data that I you know dito po sa pulilyo so it appears that there are some bats that are generalist uh, occupying multiple caves, multiple conditions of the caves, uh, whether it's large, small, highly disturbed, or least disturbed. So what what appears is that there are some species na would are would pref, um kite anong classing kweba they are found in those kinds. Uh, and Balanura electo even uh kite disturbing kweba malit yung kweba they are found there. But for fruit bats, uh, even with your relatively size cave na highly disturbed medyo hindi po siya wala po siya doon other uh, mga hypsoderids uh, mga hypsoderids they di mamang malalaking mga hypsoderids uh, some of them can be found in disturbed areas as well uh, but what we're seeing as, uh, also with the data is some of the largest caves also with the largest number of species actually have the largest highest number of disturbance types present. Because you have so many number of species there, maraming guano, people would actually go there. It's a very large cave. People would actually visit that because of that very, very large cave and they want to see uh, lots of bats. 
and then marami rin mga swift deaths that are found. So uh, what we're actually seeing, not only in Polila, actually in Marinduque, in Samal Island, uh, in Cavinti as well. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Amy? So, may habol pa ba ang ilang committee members na tanong? Bago ako pagtanong. <coughs> Kung wala na, uh, ilip, tanong ko lang. Uh, would you say that uh, there would be more fruit bats or larger bats with higher cave temperature. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, what's happening? Uh, actually, although my data would suggest that more species are, it seems, are found in caves with relatively lower temperature, but the bats themselves can be a source of that high temperature, added temperature inside the cave. Actually, yes. uh, one, of my student, uh, one of my students actually did that. Uh, and some of that, because mm, there mm, are mm, more mm, 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 actually would, uh, it would drive a much higher temperature as compared to other chambers na there are more mga so it's more of a uh, yeah it's a, it's a loop it's a loop parang chicken and an egg story. Yes. So although some of them would would go to um, found in caves that are relatively low temperature, but which on the means, other hand, which means also that the more abundant the bats are, the tendency would be for it. So it becomes really a loop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which I should. I should include that in my discussion as well. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for, you. for pointing that out. Yes, yeah, sir. It's, it's a chicken and an egg loop. So, although, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. Something like that. Okay. Yeah, sure. Now, uh, with uh, you showed that there are more pregnant uh, bats and there are more maternity roosts during the dry season. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, that's also the season where visitors yes, usually sir. go to caves. So, uh, and, and I think that's not only for Polilia, that's for all caves that have, have been open to tourism anywhere in the country. Yes, sir. So, <clears throat> I'm not sure if we should include that in your discussion or recommendation, but. I think that would be a source of conflict if we want to conserve the bats as in comparison to uh, the desire of lo local governments to open their caves for tourism. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, I participated in some forum sa DOT, Department of Tourism, where I presented the yeah, bat virus. Then, uh, the, 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 the part of tourism with, with with much um, appeal from from the LGU na makapeding open ay mga for tourism because much of the tourism industry has ano bumaksak talaga during the pandemic and then ang sinajes ko dun sa during the, the the forum is that on top of the you know, the, the potential viruses that are found on these in these bats so ang ano pa dito is uh, they Bats are also vulnerable at their most vulnerable during the, the pregnancy stage or in the breeding stage. So and then uh, and it corresponds with the, you know, the, the dry season, maraming tourists. So uh, the DNR actually, the BMB uh, strenuously suggested na wag mo nang buksan po. Uh, outright wag mo na pong buksan ng mga kweba. And of course, I interjected na Kung sa mga kuya ba nawala namang panige, why not? You can do that as long as there's safety protocols. But for those caves na maraming paniki po, I, and I suggest, uh, of course, during the, the tourist season, yung ano, uh, I suggest na I, I totally agree with, with the BMB DNR. Aside from the, the dangers that it can pose to, to the, the bats, uh, on top of that, yung, yung health hazard for the for the sa mga tao din po. And then, of course, kasi uh, 
mataas din kasi ang incidence but based from other studies mataas ang incidence ng viral shedding during pregnancy period po oh. so opo mas mataas mo mataas din ang viral load so oh. that's interesting yes sir um uh, <clears throat> uh, just to supplement uh, the comments of ma'am G and ma'am uh, actually lahat ng members ng committee about uh, relating the results with forest conditions uh, i guess during our series of field work in Puerto, we have noticed that uh, even under coconut trees figs ficus species are in their fruiting or yung, yung nagla, naglalabas na nung syncomium i see. think uh, yun ay pagkain ng pagkain ng mga fruit bats Yes, which I think sir. can can also be uh, related to uh, their source of food during during the dry months. Okay. At least, meron naman tayong Opa. observation talaga. Opa. Opa. Sir, pagkaganto, well, and address as well to the all of the the the, the panel. Uh, pag susulatin, well, pag dadag i supplement ko na lang po do sa discussion yung mga mga secondary data in 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 this uh in explaining yung uh bakit ganito yung pattern ng abundance and stuff like that. I think uh, pwede naman either secondary data or kung may published literature or even unpublished literature na. Opo. Okay. Uh, may may dagdag ata si Ma'am G? Yes, um I have already yung sinabi mo June yung tungkol sa ficus species. I have already I have two MS students uh, who found out that ficus is a very important uh, secondary species during the regeneration of forest. Mm -hmm. We have already one published paper on that Galias and the Cuevas okay. 20, uh, okay, uh, okay, Dean, Dean, 2017. Dean. Okay. And then I have one more na, uh, environmental science Krisa uh, Balangkod, which shows that ficus is also an uh, important uh, species for regenerating forest. Okay, ma. So okay. if you can relate, yes, if you can have an inventory of ficus species and then kailan ang flowering nila, yes, ma. pwede mong uh, matuhog. Yes, ma'am. And that yeah. would be very good sa iyong... Uh, ano, Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I will do that. Relating forest status. Okay, po, ma'am. Kasi I would assume na yung yung forest sa Polillo Island ay mga secondary forest na. Wala nang primary forest. Meron pa rin good forest stature. Pero yung mga... At least sa puting bato, opo. Pero very maliit na lang. Mostly secondary na yun. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And maraming iba-ibang species ng ficus. Opo, Kasi opo. they are um, so. present in most regenerating secondary forests. Opo, 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 opo. Okay po, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma meron lang uh, akong out of curiosity. Meron lang ako sa question. Opo, ma'am. Yung bats sa uh, Polillo Island, do they travel to Real Quezon? Kasi sabi mo mga 30 kilometers lang. That's cur curious lang ako. Kaya ba nilang maglakbay? <laughs> Kaya, ma'am, well, kasi, uh, well, pero yung data is coming from Subic Bay. Uh, may nagawa sila ng telemetry doon before, uh, 2013 po yata. And some bat, mga flying foxes po, ito po yung mga malalaking mga paniki, mga large, large fruit bats, can travel per night mga 87 kilometers per night. Pero ang mean distance ay maabot ng mga 30 to 40 kilometers po. So, theoretically, amito, kaya. They will be crossing Ocean eh. Uh, oh, yes, oh yes ma'am. Oh yes ma'am. Kahit mag-travel ng sea, cross the sea. Oh yes ma'am. Opo. Pero ma'am, pero mga mga large fruit bats po. Pero yung mga small bats, fruit bat, mga ano, uh, medyo limited po yung dispersal. Oh, yung mga bats na nasa pulilyo. Maliliit sila. Opo, yung sila. Mga, mga kueba. Although meron po mga malalaking mga panigil. Actually ma'am, dati nag-ano kami, nag-telemetry ma'am kami ng ng uh, Golden Crown Flying Fox, the largest in the world actually ma'am. Nilagyan namin ng radio collar satellite feed. So it was detected 1,000 kilometers away in Guam. Oh. 
Yes, ma'am. So, and then naputol na, naputol ma'am yung signal after 10 days yata. So, yun okay. Pero yes, ma'am, they can, they can travel. So, this has implication as well with spread ng disease. So, yun. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mga, yes, ma'am. Ano ko lang ngayon? I'm just curious. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, do we have any other question? <clears throat> yes, ma'am, Pao? Philip, yung iyong um, meeting ng uh, PM, midnight, and morning, meron na nun, right? Noong 2013? Opo, ma'am. Okay. Uh, ano nga yung rationale mo dun? Because normally, we would say that the emergence of the microbats would be during uh, mga before... Six. Uh, uh, six million. Uh, so, uh, I do the midnight and the... Uh, yung AM ba? Ayun yung pag Yes, ma'am. Return. Okay. But uh, there are also some data in other places in Southeast Asia na <clears throat> parang mayroong trimodal activity mm-hmm. during the night uh, in terms of emergence and exit. So, some of them uh, we suggest na may meron din mga bumabalik during midnight or 11 o'clock in the evening or 1 o'clock in the evening. So, hindi naman necessarily na yung bats when they emerge, eh, nandun po sila sa labas all throughout the night. And then, so in some areas, in some studies, meron din po mga midnight na in between na bumabalik. So, so I decided to test that. Meron nga midnight. Opo, meron midnight. But what I found here is that... Uh, Although ma- mas mababa yung aming netting effort kasi ang hirap din gumising ng, ng ating gabi. No? I mean, uh, pero what we found out that uh, if corrected for effort, although mas mababa yung sa midnight, pero the same din halos yung number of species um, na nakikita during the early evening and then the early morning. Man. Yeah. So, so be sure to explain why you did that method. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then also yung results, what do they indicate? No. Yes, ma'am. Okay, pa. Okay. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, I think I, I have the same uh, opinion with uh, Ma'am Pao. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Uh, any other question? If I don't have any other question. So, uh, <clears throat> congratulations, Philip. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, so uh, thank you very much to all our expert uh, panel reviewers and um, and to the remaining audience out there. Uh, I, we hope that uh, you have picked up something uh, you know great and uh, good information from the discussions among the speaker and the experts. So before we end the uh, program, let me just. Um, share my slide here and uh we are giving the certificate of recognition to our speaker uh and it reads museum of natural history office of the vice chancellor for research and extension up dos banos awards this certificate of recognition to professor philip a alviola for serving as our research person during uh, today's um uh, 2021 mnh biodiversity seminar entitled ecology of bats Order Microchiroptera in the Karst Forest Landscape of Pulilio Island, Quezon. Held today, 26th of May, from 1 to 3 p.m. Philippine Standard Time via Zoom. So in witness whereof, the signature of our director, Dr. Marian P. De Leon, is hereby affixed. So please, uh, everyone, um, check out our website. It's at mnh.uplb at up.edu.ph. Uh, write us at mnh.uplb at up.edu.ph. Like us, uh, follow, subscribe on uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Just look for the handle UPLB Museum. The recording will be uploaded to our YouTube channel later. And check out UPLB Museum of Natural History uh, on Wikipedia and uh, TripAdvisor. So, sa lahat po ng ating mga audience and participate today. Uh, Thank you very much.